Johnny Fontana, Real World NF Scorpio, back with another video. That is what I see is consistent with reality in the sense that people that are extremely successful and balanced and are not really having a super hard time in life as far as, you know, knowing who they are and getting shit done, they have to play all eight functions. It doesn't matter which functions they're born with. It doesn't matter which two savior functions they like best. As they've gotten older and they've gotten good, what defines them as a great person in society is that they can be F-E courteous and they can T-E make things work. And they do T-I know the reasons for their identity. And they do have an F-I value value that they're very passionate about. They don't care if you like it or not. So they end up having all the functions, quote unquote, in some way, shape or form as far as their performance. Today, we're going to talk about uh, forging our ways through society, right? Based on our individual strengths, right? So as I've talked about before, we have three different types of INFJs primarily, right? Mainstays. Obviously, there are um, differences even within those but just at the core, right? You, everyone has to have a, like a main core, a mainstay. And we're going to discuss how we often miss the paradox when it comes to cultivating and grooming our personality traits against the majority, you know, us being the minority. So let's get into it. Right. So for example, people will say, um, I want to work on my inner game. And then they'll give themselves some kind of a mission to go do this thing to get them desensitized to fear. Well, that mission is an outer game mission. You're developing a skill set and you're developing a process. It's based on, you know, I feel this way. I would be better off if I felt a different way or I have this attitude or mindset. I'd be better off if I trained a different mindset. Well, you can try and just think your way into that mindset <clears throat> and that doesn't work. That, that just puts you more in your head. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but the way that you can actually achieve a better mindset, better outlook, better view on life is actually through experience. Because the things that we learn and believe, we learn through experience, right? You know, my wife always tells me uh, to stop making sipping noises when uh, I'm in front of camera. So, you know, she's my wife. I listen to her. But sometimes you can't live your life based on others. <sighs> and that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about that. That's high contact, low contact. I'm going to fill in the details. Meaning that we may often miss the paradox. And we're going to have, again, you have to hold different concepts in your mind. We miss the, the paradox, meaning that we often say, hey, we are misunderstood. People don't get us. We are weird. We do things that others would find intrusive, cringeworthy, and all that stuff, right? And so then we curb our ways in order to satisfy the social, I guess, uh, terms of others, right? In order to sort of level that social platform, right? So that everyone can be comforted. But then we don't realize, one, that they're being themselves. ESTPs, they want to be tough. They want to be straightforward. They want to be, you know, hard chargers and say whatever it is that's on their mind without any filter. They're going to do it. And they don't really care how you feel. But yet, when we do whatever we do, we sort of feel bad, awkward, because we stepped on people's shoes or, you know, we curb our ways because we don't want others around us to feel a certain way because we're acting normal, right? But yet we miss the paradox because, again, we see ourselves as different. Not special snowflakes, but we are different in that we have introverted intuition. We are introverted feelers, Okay, so therefore we have different perspectives. We are deep, we are analytical, and so therefore how we analyze, assess, and go about doing certain things is of the minority compared to most people who are just detailed and straightforward and not really thinking beyond what's in front of them. And we miss that paradox in that we 
don't allow ourselves to forge our capabilities because we're too busy, again, being mindful of others, trying to not rub elbows and so forth and so on. And same case with this whole sipping of this, right? Obviously, we have to be reasonable. You know, there's a, a level of, or a, my bad, a, a sense of being um, uh, reasonable, um, discreet, um, not so intrusive, right? Um, having discipline, you know, all those. Um, manners, okay, just employing, just a perception that just goes along with society, okay, for the most part. Yes, there is that. But then there is a process by which we need to cultivate our own abilities, otherwise we will constantly see what is happening now and that's why I, i'm working on this this is quarter nine percent but this is what i'm realizing it's someone will have to connect the dots you know maybe you can email me remember i don't do the, the comments but you can email me i don't read comments just because i don't like to get involved in all of that stuff but i'm realizing that because of the fact that we are so overwhelmed by the sensors and the thinkers that we don't allow ourselves to fully grow, right, and explore our, 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 our own capabilities because we're being always told, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. So I'll give you an example. I, because I'm a sensor-dominated type, along with the field, just because of what I've been exposed to, military, you know, living in different countries, and, and my family being uh, ethnically, you know, uh, from uh, the Caribbean, so... You know, a lot of people who are very, you know, extroverted, outgoing, dancing, loud music and all that stuff, very expressive. So, but originally I was shy. And so because of that, I grew up always asking questions, trying to figure people out. And my father would always tell me, hey, you know, people that are, feel that they're being imposed upon by your deep questioning and you're so deep analytical, you're a little too reserved, you're a little too shy. Well, it was a process. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that there are only 20 years between us. Yeah. yeah. So obviously at first, in a way, I was growing up with you. Gotcha. Yeah. And I think I was a bit of a disciplinarian mm -hmm. going back to, I suppose, the way my parents were with me. Yeah. Again, part of it is because that's who they were, traditional, conservative in terms of not allowing me to watch TV, not allowing me to go out, so forth. So I was sort of, you know, um, cuddled, cuddled, um, if you will, compared to the other children in my neighborhood. But as a result, though, because of, of who I am naturally, I would always ask questions, figure out, and that's why I would always ask questions about certain things. And then my stepmother would, be like, oh, he's, he's fueling fire, he's this, that, and a third. And so then she would sort of push me apart from my siblings because I would always be asking the questions. I was the eldest, and, and she'd be like, ah. But then come to find out, much of what I was asking came to be. Now, every parent has a lot of good to it, though. Every parent is very nurturing, it's very helpful, it contributes so much to other people. And INFJs, especially need to have opportunities to contribute to others um but again i was the only one that was willing to ask questions you know and that's why a lot of people couldn't hide stuff from me because they know i would ask right so my father he was around and um for the holiday weekend and came to where we would be at counters and whatever and i would ask questions right like i'm I like figuring people out, right? That's that's my mainstay. We all have our mainstays, right? Out of all the INFJs, you know, you have the TI types. Either they're very uh, analytical, the the real thinkers that are geared towards sciences and engineers, and then you have more like the philosophical, the intellectual 
TI driven INFJs and you have the spiritual types, um, the mystical, then you have more of like the, not the shamanistic, but more of like, like the guiders, right? Like they're sort of halfway, like they're not so much into spirituality, not so much in, 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 into mysticism, but they're sort of like just a guide and like, so you can go to them, like when you're having some real deep troubles, they'll be like, hey, just make peace. Don't worry about it. You know, you're okay. Um, and then you also have, you know, my type, which is more of like the SE driven, not the, the, the fly high, you know, stunt man, but we just want to know, like we, we, we want to travel, we want to experience certain things. Uh, but then we also need to recharge as well. But then we learn not to crash as hard as like the ESTPs, the ESTJs, those that are really high, you know, driven, like they need a lot of like time to recover. So because of that, I would ask, I want to know, hey, where are you from? I would ask these questions just like, and sometimes people would feel imposed upon. They would feel that I'm intruding on their personal whatever. It's no wonder that both these types actually kind of are like really lonely and they kind of feel alone and they wish people would invite them to things. But the reason why people don't is because people are like, well, I don't want to deal with her or him telling me what they think because... I mean, I, I just feel so stupid around them, right? I've also felt alienated by INFJs in my life who've been doing the same thing to me. They're like, you can't behave that way, FI trickster. And it's like, well, I don't know any different. I have FI trickster. So what business do you have judging me, right? So, and that's the thing. It's like, you have like ESTJs, ESTPs, like the, the very straightforward people. They don't care. They'll tell you what it is that's on their mind. You go to the DMV, they'll say, Go sit over there, wait your turn. Like they don't really care about your feelings. Whereas us will take a different approach and so forth and so on. And you know what I'm saying to you? That's why we missed the paradox in that we need to realize that in order for us to room our capabilities and grow, we need to sort of do what it is do do what it is that we do best. We still have to be mindful, though, because that's who we are, because we still have to remain authentic. Again, we're holding different concepts in our minds, meaning that I was with my father and like often I would see someone and I'm curious about the accent. I'm like, I, said, I hear different accents in there. I hear West Coast. I hear East Coast as well. I hear a little down South. Hey, you sound like you were either from this place, but spent some time in here. And also, yeah, yeah, I was actually born in New York or it would be, my parents are actually from, you know, from New York or from New England, but we actually moved to California, but my grandparents are from, from South Carolina. So I can hear all of those in there and I can pick that up. But when I'm with my father, he's more of the diplomat, you know, he spent so many years in the UN. So he's got that more diplomatic glove approach. Well, I am uh, very similar to you in many ways, but I'm also very different. Mm -hmm. So in, in, you what, are, in, in what way similar? Well, you're very... Well, we are people's people, mm -hmm. okay? I, I, I like to understand people the same way you do, mm -hmm. but we just have a different approach. Mm -hmm. Yours is more direct, is deeper, mm -hmm. perhaps intrusive mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. uh, I may get the same results, but I will take longer. So for him, it's like, don't be so intrusive, you know, don't be so whatever, just, you know, remain diplomatic, don't speak so much, just, you know, uh, speak softly, carry a bit, big stick. You know, he was very aggressive when he was younger as an ENTP, very, you know, um, he got annoyed quickly, uh, very, didn't have enough patience. But as, as he got old, it's funny. Like, he's a totally different person. And I'm sure a lot of ENTPs can actually um, uh, identify with that. But he he doesn't like that. Like, when I'm with him and I'm asking people questions, like, he would say, well, you know, I think because of this incident, we were at a counter and she was doing some registration for us and she then started asking more questions. And he thought, based on me asking where she was from, and by her response, that led to her now digging a little bit more and asking more questions than she would have if I had not taken that approach of asking her the question of where she was and so forth and so on. So again, as an ENTP, he's also thinking about these things as well, but more from like 
oh, I just want that more diplomatic approach. I want to have to conduct the business, you know, on even keel. Everything is layered. Whereas for me, like, I want to go and dig, you know? So, and that's why I say, like, sometimes we need to just say, you know what? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Obviously, we have self-discipline. We are feelers, okay? We, we, we like to ensure that social level or the social atmosphere is leveled. So we need to be mindful. Don't do it in front of him or people who are uncomfortable. But when you're alone, do it. Ask where you're from. Or if you're around, like, for example, my wife, she's okay with doing it. Like, she's actually interested. Like I told you before, I don't know if I told you the story before, when we were shopping for a uh, couch, I, I may be repeating it, I'm sorry. Uh, we were shopping for a couch, and I kept on, because the, the guy, the, 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 uh, the salesperson was speaking to, to my wife, and I was picking up an accent, and I was like, I don't know where that's from, bro, but I know it's, yeah, but it's not just the general state. I'm like, I want to know the bro. So I, after she was done with him, I said, sir, I, I got, but not ask him where he was from, because it's like a, like a game for me, right? And that's how, again, you're forging your abilities. And that's my thing, right? Like we're talking about before, if you are a scientist and you forge your abilities in the way that you know how to, right? I can't because I'm not TI-driven, so I, I can't give you, I can't provide you that, that context, but you'd have to figure out a way that you can do it yourself. Or if you're more spiritual, you'd have to forge your way. But for me, as an SE, I'm more socially driven in terms of figuring people out. I was like, I'm going to guess where you're from. He's like, well, well, it's hard. You know, everyone can guess. Everyone knows. But they, 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 they never get where I'm actually from, from. He's like, yeah, you can guess because obviously he's from New York. So he's like, basically, you can tell he's from New York. But then I said, I'm going to go. So you sound like. Brooklyn, Staten Island. I said, I was going to go. I said, no, no. I, before I said that, I said, I was going to go up north to Connecticut, but I'm going to stick with Brooklyn, Staten Island. He was like, actually, I was born in Brooklyn, got married, lived in Staten Island. And when I got divorced, I went back to Brooklyn. And we're in Vegas now. And he's been living in Vegas for like, I think, 12 years, 13 years. This is what I'm saying to you. But again, some people, if you like with like a like an EST type or like a thinker, they don't want that. Like they they're like, bro, like go away, like stop asking questions. You know what I'm saying to you? So again, like you have to be mindful. Like don't do it around them. But when you're alone, when you have the ability to do it, or if you're out somewhere else, do it. Like when you get that urge, like if let's say you're an engineer and like you you, you pass by like I don't know, a store, and you see how these things are like, you know, and you're like, man, like, I wonder how this relates to this. And you go, hey, sir, like, I can ask a question. You know, I, I'm actually, uh, you know, I graduated, you know, with a, uh, a, um, a, uh, a degree in engineering. And in my mind, I'm trying to figure out, and I've been working on this, this time of third. Now, my, many of these people, they won't be receptive to that. They'll be like, Oh, dude, I don't know. Like, you might have to check with some, you know what I'm saying to you? But it doesn't matter. Just ask. Just do it. Because, again, that's, what is that going to help you do? It's going to give you the ability to be more, um, I don't know. It's going to give you, it's like a cold approach, okay, in dating. Okay, that's why I sort of connect the dots, even though I'm not a pickup artist, but I connect the dots. These cold approaches. So... Again, if you want to develop a nimble, agile social intelligence that can adapt to any situation that might arise dynamically, there is simply no way around it. You're going to have to get out there, get out in the field, and have as many unique interactions under your belt as humanly possible. Practicing on one girl just ain't going to cut it. I think I'm, to, I think I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to title this. These cold approaches is what helps us cultivate our abilities you know just random cold approaching just going out there figuring things out asking people some people may be receptive some people don't that's what it is yeah it's the cold approach so all of the effective inner game techniques fundamentally come down to taking action which means they fundamentally are still outer game solutions and in fact 
um, thinking about your inner game, thinking about your psychology, thinking about how you're, how you're thinking, <coughs> literally is the definition of going inside your head. The best way to be outside your head actually is to be so focused on the real world, so focused on the girl, so focused on what you're doing and so intent on what you're doing that you literally don't have any mental RAM left for being inside your head. And then it is literally impossible to be in your head, right? You are forcing yourself outside of your head, but again, you're doing it through action. So I think, no, I think I'm going to, I'm not even going to go further on that. I'm just going to let you chew on that, eat that for a moment. And, uh, We'll be back with the next video. I'm gonna stop this video, do another video on going out, the three types of going out. So uh, stick around for the next video. Johnny Fontana, Real World, NF, Scorpio, we out.